Welcome to this lecture series in complex numbers. <coughs> in this lecture, we'll look at a nice application of complex numbers to a problem about regular polygons. The problem itself has nothing to do with complex numbers, and which is why I find it very interesting. So fix a positive integer. Let's say it is at least three or something. Uh, and um, consider the vertices of a regular polygon of, uh, you know, n sides. So n sided regular polygon is being considered. This is a picture corresponding to n equals eight. So these are evenly spaced around, you know, a circle. And uh, let m be any point on the circumference of the circle that is circumscribing the vertices. So all the vertices lie on a circle and pick m a point on the circle arbitrarily. Then we want to show this. The dis take the distance of m with a1 and square it. Take the distance of m with a2, square it distance of m with a3 square it and so on and add all of those things then the result we want to show is equal to this much 2nr square the point is that this does not depend on the choice of the point m no matter which point m we choose we get the same answer and that's quite surprising uh, here r is the radius of the circle that is circumscribing the regular polygon so that's that's the problem and uh, we will solve this using complex numbers so <clears throat> first of all, we will think of all these points as complex numbers. In fact, we will think of them as roots of unity. So basically we'll be solving it for r equals one, that much we can assume. It doesn't matter what is the radius of the circle. One can always scale things and assume that the radius of the circle is one. And once the radius of the circle is one, you can translate the circle to arrange that all these points are roots of unity. So a1 is, let's say zeta is equal to, uh, cos 2 pi by n plus iota sine 2 pi by n then a1 is zeta this is zeta square let me use a different color so this is equal to zeta this is zeta square this is zeta cube and so on this is zeta to the power n minus 1 a n is zeta to the n which is also equal to 1 so basically zeta zeta square up to zeta to the n are all the vertices or you could also think of them as not think they are exactly the nth roots of unity all right and let's say p is an arbitrary arbitrary point here again let me use a different color so the point m is denoted by p the complex number p and uh, what we want to do is take the distance of p with a1 and square it and take the distance of p with a2 then square it and go up to the nth vertex so this is what we want to show is equal to 2n because r is equal to 1 so we want to show that this quantity is equal to 2n all right what is this quantity this is uh, can be written in a different way it's just let me use k so this is k equals 1 to n p minus zeta to the k whole square and now we just use this simple formula that uh, a minus b modulus square is modulus a square plus modulus b square minus twice of real part of a bar b. So I'll let you check this. So using that, this thing becomes summation k equals 1 to n uh, mod p square plus mod zeta to the k square minus twice of real part of p bar zeta to the k all right but since p is on the unit circle this is one zeta is already a root of unity so zeta to the k is also a root of unity and hence has magnitude one so we get this which is equal to 2n minus twice of summation of k from 1 to n, the real part of p bar zeta to the k. So we just pushed the summation inside. This 2 becomes 2n. And uh, yeah, I hope you see what's going on. So this is what we need to deal with. But what is that? This is equal to 2n minus twice of real part of summation k is equal to 1 to n p bar zeta to the k. Because the reason is this, uh, real part of 
a plus b is equal to real part of a plus real part of b that's a very simple thing is being used from this step to that step <coughs> okay uh, further i mean i'm being very very pedantic this is the real part of p bar times summation k equals 1 to n zeta to the k now what you can do is this is basically sum of all the nth roots of unity and therefore this is zero or you could use the geometric formula if you use the formula for the geometric series what do you get this is p bar um, first term common ratio power number of terms minus one divided by common ratio minus one uh, you don't have space common ratio to the n minus one divided by common ratio minus one so I use the formula for geometric series but since zeta to the n is equal to one this becomes zero and therefore this whole thing is zero so this whole thing is basically zero and hence this summation is 2n and that's it so using complex numbers this is actually just a simple trivial problem it's a matter of pure computation using plane geometry this will require some thinking and it's not at all clear that such a thing should be true but using complex numbers it's evident and with that, I want to end this lecture. As usual, like, comment, share, subscribe. I also have Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.